Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at something extremely freaking cool. This one borderlines on technological magic. So even if you're not into Unity, I recommend you stick around because this one is really impressive. Basically, Unity have just released a new package uh, built on WebRTC called uh, Render Streaming, I believe. We'll, we'll get to the exact name in a second. But first, I'm just gonna jump in. I'm gonna show you what this is, and then we'll look at how it works and how you can get it and all the rest of that stuff after the fact. But first, let's start with the magic. So here we are, typical Unity project. You've seen this before if you've used Unity. It's the standard scene. I'm gonna go ahead up here and press play. So our scene is now running. And now what I'm going to do is switch over to my web browser and hit enter. And what you will see is a little play icon. Give it a couple seconds. And let me just move this guy down a little bit. Look at our scene up in Unity. Look at our scene down here. And what I can do is move things around. And it doesn't end there. Let me just keep showing you some more cool, assuming this actually works. This is an application called Reflector. It allows me to connect my uh, phone over. So what I'm going to do now is uh, Chromecast my phone to my computer, in theory. All right, so there is my phone. I'm just gonna go up here and fire up Edge of all browsers. And then you will see I have entered the exact same URL in. I'm going to press play. And any visual decay you see on the right-hand side, that's just the screen streaming. It's got nothing to do with what's actually happening. But there we go, we are now loaded up. And I am on my phone moving things around. And you will notice we can interact with a web browser, with Unity, and our phone all at once. We can have up to like 10, 20 connections all coming into the same game running out of Unity. This is some next level magic stuff. Let's see if I can do a two finger pinch. I'm not sure if that works or not. No, it doesn't look like it. So again, I can come back over here to the browser. And then you see here, you've got controls. You can uh, send commands through. Uh, I could also have done that so I can turn the light back on using my phone. So let's turn the light back on. So you see you've got touchscreen commands that you can do and they control all three of the devices and you can control on any of the screens. And if I go back over again to my phone so it shows, I'll set that to, yeah, it's fine. I'll put always on top. All right, so here we go. I'll move that around in Unity. And you see it updates on the phone. And if the browser was on screen still, it would be updating there as well. Like I said, this is some next level magic stuff. I'm very, very, very impressed here. So let me just stop casting. We don't really need that anymore. Come on. Okay, I'll just ignore it. Go away. And we'll go back over here. So this is... Um, the new technology they just implemented, there's a couple of things that you got to do behind the scenes to get things up and going. Uh, there is a blog post over on Unity. Uh, so this is kind of describing, they use WebRTC as the technology here. Uh, it's called render streaming. There are a couple of gotchas. First off, I guess I should have covered this one right up front. This is unfortunately for Windows users only. You also need to have an NVIDIA card that's fairly current. Uh, I'm using a 1050 and I think that's about the cutoff. You also need to have brand new drivers. Um, and you also need to install the new input system when you're up and going. Uh, so you can simulcast from multiple devices over. Uh, goal is to broadcast to more than 10 devices. We recommend incorporating an SFU decentralized server. Uh, so you are going to run into limitations of what your machine can handle eventually. Uh, it uses the NVIDIA video codec to, to handle the GPU and hardware encoding. That's why you need to have not only a 1050 or better NVIDIA card, you also need to have newest drivers. I had three or four week old drivers and they did not have support. Port. So make sure you update there. Um, and then you need to go about actually figuring out how to install this thing. There are instructions. You come here, click the English link. Uh, it will lead you to eventually this tutorial. And this tutorial is missing so many steps. So it's very frustrating following Unity's instructions on how to get this up and going. So in the linked article, I will have all of the pieces you need. But basically, you need to go to this GitHub release page and download uh, this streaming guy the template render streaming guy, and then you're going to need the WebRTC uh, as well. You can get that from Unity's page. Uh, they don't actually tell you this, but basically go on down here, locate WebRTC. Uh, it's here somewhere. I probably went right by it, but let's use the power of find and replace. So if you go into this guy right here, you'll find there is a release. And then under the release, you want to grab that guy right there. Now you're going to need to actually go ahead and install all of these in your Unity directories. Now, if you're wondering how to get about them, the easiest way is to actually come into Unity Hub, go to Installs, 
and then pick the one that you want to install for. Oh, there's another requirement, 2019.1 or higher. Uh, then you come here, you go show in Explorer. This will open up to your uh, root folder for your editor. And then you want to go to data, resources. Again, I will link all this. Package manager. And under package templates, that, oops, not package templates, project templates. That is where you want to drop the render streaming um, template preview here. Oops, that's not supposed to be it. Template render, that one. So you want to drop template render streaming in the project templates folder. Go back to the package manager directory, go into editor. And this is where you want to drop WebRTC and render streaming. Again, I will link to all of those files that you need and I will link um, uh, the subdirectories that you need. So if you didn't catch all that, don't worry. But that is the install process. Once you have done that, you can come in here and you can create a new project using the version that you just configured for. And you will notice there is a new template. Here we go. Unity renders streaming template. Just create a game using that guy. Now, of course, you are going to run into the typical uh, Unity uh, package manager dependency hell loop. It's going to require a newer version for HDRP. Load it up. Pick the newer version of HDRP in the package manager. Restart your project. The usual jazz that you got to deal with with modern day Unity. The other thing you're going to need to do is come in here. Go to Windows, package manager. Now that that works, here we go. Uh, you'll see all of your various different packages here. You're going to want to come in here and turn on uh, show preview if you don't have so already. And the other one you need to install for this to work in addition to the HD render pipeline is the input system. So just come on in here, enable this one, and you are good to go. Now there's one final setup you need to do before you can run your game, and that is come in here to render streaming. And you'll notice over here, I've already set a URL for this. Well, where do you go ahead and get this URL? Well, that's actually, it's in your assets folder. So we come here and we want to go ahead and open in our show and explorer like so. And you'll notice inside of your game's uh, assets directory, there is a folder called assets. Inside of it, there's a folder called bin. And inside of that, there is a web server. Double click that and it will give you a list of IPs that are valid for this machine. And then you just pick one of them and paste it in here. And then that is the URL you use for all your various different machines to connect to your remote game. And then the, the whole thing you got left to do is to go ahead and run it. And then you can connect to it using that IP address from various different devices. So once again, boom, take that IP address, go over to your browser, put it in, press play, and you are bah, 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 eventually going to connect like so. Uh, and it, it should actually work in all modern web browsers, including um, Chrome. Uh, it works in Edge for Android and it works for iOS and Safari. So all your mobile support sh should actually have this and you should be able to get uh, pretty much like full speed, uh, depending regardless to which actual device you are running on. So this is really cool. And watch, look down here. You're going to see letters as I press them. So I'm here and I've got my browser focused. I didn't know what I just did there, but all right. So let's go back to my browser right here. And I'm going to press ASDF, A-S-D-F. And you can see I'm actually moving around the scene and the key is being sent through. Very, very, very cool. So this is their new uh, render streaming and using WebRTC. Both packages are brand new. Again, I will link down below kind of a, a bit of a, you can use their tutorial. I will link to their tutorial, but the missing pieces like where you actually download the damn things uh, and where you put them all, I will document all that in the linked article down below. But this is some really cool stuff. Uh, I'm impressed anyways. I'm interested in hearing what you have to say about this as well. If, if you find this as impressive as I do or not. All right, that's it. Uh, new uh, remote rendering and WebRTC support in Unity uh, 2019.1 or newer, so long as you are on Windows and you have have an NVIDIA card. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.